Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Harp Trading Room here, taking a look at the Harp charts. This is Elite Currency, uh, and of course, Elite Currency is run by Netit and myself. We try to help you trade uh, using AQ system and Harp charts. Before we dive into today's topic, though, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar and, uh, and recording is for informational and educational purposes only. And we continue watching this webinar. You agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right. Perhaps as uh, you know, Nenet and I, of course, do a lot of webinars and analysis for Admiral Markets. We also share uh, our opinions uh, regarding technicals and waves, uh, etc. Traders blog. So you can check us out at AdmiralMarkets.com. And if you join Admiral Markets, then we have some good stuff for you. For instance, we, we give you credit uh, for our website and courses. And uh, also you would be trading with a award-winning bro broker because uh, they actually won the best MT4 broker award last year in the UK. Regarding this particular webinar, please be aware that we're taking basically a look at harp charts. Uh, there are you know, multiple indicators here, so that could uh, maybe bit be a bit confusing please give it some time uh, to understand it and i think you'll see quickly the benefit basically we're looking at a you know a couple of steps that we find beneficial like looking for the trend and we do that by using the haikinashi candles light green indicates uptrend uh, dark red indicates downtrend and we look for basically our momentum indicator here the top one specifically uh to be dark blue or dark red there are other oscillator indicators as well, but they're more like a, an extra confluence uh, to, to gain more confidence. Uh, they are not the primary ones. We also check, of course, filters. We Just because we have a trend doesn't mean we trade it right away. Let's say that we're looking for upside. We would not want to go long right in front of a pivot point because that would be a resistance spot. Furthermore, we are still looking for on lower time frames the momentum pullback continuation. So uh, we can see momentum by using uh, the blue and red candles that are appearing on the chart. Those are not Haikinashi candles, those are normal candlesticks, but they do have, a, they use a color code basically uh, to show whether the price is in a bullish or, or bearish momentum. Blue obviously upside, red obviously down, and gray is neutral. With these charts, basically there are a couple of ways of, of you know, using them to, to, do, to our benefit. Uh, the arrows, for instance, uh, could be an extra, not a motivation I wanted to say, an extra confirmation that price is going our way. Uh, we can use the color candles themselves as entries or basically the oscillators to when they turn, for instance, from thick red to thin red as a, as a completion of the retracement or from thick blue to thin blue, all right? As a, again, uh, where we would consider that as a completion of the retracement if we're looking for downside. And the reasoning is that, for instance, here, when we, in this case, we're, you know, it's an uptrend, so we wouldn't, that would be a bad example. It's here, for instance, right? When it changes from thick to thin, when we're in an uptrend, right? From thick red to thin red, basically that indicates to us the end of the bearish, bearish retracement, the end of the bearish correction. And that uh, is most likely a good moment for the continuation of the momentum and trend to the upside. All right. So those are just some rules. Obviously, this week uh, is a bit different because we have we do have a, a big news event coming up. Uh, well, it's not even I would even qualify it differently. It's you know it's a historical event. This is something that I guess you might witness uh, once. A decade or so, uh, or, or at least once a year. I mean, this is not something that we see every month. That's for sure, obviously. So it is quite special. We have, of course, we're talking about Brexit. And uh, if you're interested in knowing more about Brexit, I don't want to you know, talk in detail about that. I think it's best if you join us tonight, admiralmarkets.com. Just go to education, click on webinars, and just uh, join our British referendum on EU membership. And we're taking a look at it from a training perspective. That's today at 7 p.m. Central European time. So I would encourage you to join that if you're interested about knowing more about Brexit. But in general, obviously, it's going to be uh, a bit more difficult week from a technical point of view. All right, so let's take a look at the charts. Now, 
for those that joined perhaps this morning's webinar at Admiral Markets, where I took a look at the market, you know, before or during the London Open, um, I was looking for downside on the euro dollar, and uh, that that indeed happened. I think you can see that nicely moving down. It was not a perfect setup, you know, from our heart perspective, uh, but we do have basically a red arrow here, and uh, we're we're seeing basically the red momentum on our transform uh, momentum indicator here, right? So the downside was not perfectly set up from a higher time frame, uh, but those that, you know, maybe followed my analysis, expecting weakness due to the psychology of the market at that point, and the reasoning was just purely basically resistance being here and the fact that due to the upcoming event, we would probably not break through that resistance, okay? Uh, and the hook back here on uh, on the hourly chart, all right, probably not going to break, or the four-hour chart as well, all right. And that indeed happened. Now, one of the warnings that we maybe could have gotten from the four-hour chart is this light green fractal. Uh, if you are using a trial of these hard charts, you wouldn't have that. That's part of the main package uh, because there are too many indicators. It would take unfortunately too long to set up a trial with so many indicators. Um, relatively for everyone. We just give you an idea of a few in those trials. If you are part of the HARP charts, you would have, of course, access to everything. And you can test out those HARP charts throughout the whole June. Um, anytime if you start in June, you can test it for two weeks, no problem, okay? Uh, and uh, you see a light green triangle, uh, oh yeah, diamond actually, right? That indicates that basically dark green is great, but light green is already a signal of warning because it shows that basically price is not moving, it's stalling a bit. It's, it's basically, you know, five candles have not broken this high and then it turns from dark green to light green. Once 13 candles have gone sideways, then this will re-switch from light green to dark green. And that's just to indicate that basically when we could expect the, the highest chance of a breakout. And we have a better chance of a, of a good breakout if there's good momentum, that means we get a push within five candles, or if we have a consolidation of 13 candles or more, and then a breakout. Now I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers, but all of that is basically very simply said with the coloring of that diamond. All right, so light green, it indicates, yes, we're in uptrend, but, 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 you know, it's actually showing a bit of warning. It's, it's not continuing as fast as we would expect. All right. All right, so let's put that aside. Anyhow, so if you followed that analysis, we did have, I think, some interesting lower time frame charts to look at uh, because this was uh, a good, uh, candle, a good red candle with a good red arrow pushing through the pivot point. So, you know, from this perspective, if we're looking at lower time frames, I do think that there was a, and if you were looking at my analysis and you were looking for shorts, I do think that this was a good candle uh, breaking below the consolidation here. And that could have been a good, you know, a good way to enter a trade to the downside and trade it to the S2, for instance, uh, using these harp charts for close to 50 pips. Using the five minute chart, I think we had some good entries here. You can see we had here a retest of the pivot point and we had a good uh, candle color switch plus arrow on this one below the pivot. That's important. So I think we had basically green lights for short. And if you use the oscillator turn right here, then that would have been just a tad lower uh, basically on this candle. Stop losses would have had to be above uh, the M3 or or to pivot, that would have been a bit riskier, but possible, all right? So I think that was, you know, an example of some good uh, potential harp trades uh, throughout the day. Now, obviously, we reached already S3, and from that point of view, price has just extended too far from an intraday perspective to trade the euro dollar, especially, of course, considering the news event and considering uh, the fact that on the yeah, daily, we're in a triangle and we're halfway to that triangle, all right? If I uh, if I add this trend line, you'll see that a bit better. Oh, like that. All right. There we go. 
So uh, we have separate templates, of course, as, uh, as you might know, we have specific templates indicating for different time frames. For instance, if I would be more of a scalp wing uh, Vi, then I would use my scalp template of harp, right? Harp scalps. And then we would see it differently, right? And this would be basically one of the trending charts, just like the hourly. And we would look for a confluence between the hourly and and then 15, we would look for a trend on one of these two or both preferably. And then you can dive into the five for setups. And in that case, we see we had a trend on the scalping chart from here. I should say actually from here, a full trend. And you see that we had a good five minute entry. This is So this is more of a scalping entry or, or maybe an intraday entry uh, than, uh, than a swing, obviously. If we're looking for swing trades, we can use our swing uh, swing template. All right, and there we go. In that case, we'll be looking at four hour trend with one hour entries. And in that case, we have nothing at the moment just because we don't have any dark red candles. We don't have an ideal trend as yet. We might say that we have a careful downtrend at this point because we got red uh, oscillators here, but you know, two out of four or one out of three because uh, one of them is from Accu actually. All right, so. Uh, so it's a very early stage on the four hour chart on the hourly chart uh is it's a trigger channel so we don't have any swing trades on the euro dollar at this point very simple so i'm going to answer on your question very soon let me just dive into a new example pound usd uh, definitely an uptrend as you can see on a four hour chart right since basically things lined up here green green uh, haikinashis and uh, dark blue momentum that's what we want all right, so depending on what time frame we would be looking for trades that could potentially be on the hourly if we're looking for swing trades. Let's see if we had anything, I don't know for sure, but we'll find out. This was actually last week. So this is a setup that is more theory than practice because this was Friday. No one's gonna trade Friday a few hours before market close. Uh, but just to understand the principle, right? Uh, we would be, you know, we would be looking here already with the breakout of these fractals and everything aligned, um, we would be, let's see, no, we don't have any, we don't have any candle switches or arrows because they were before that, but we have the opportunity to take the breakout of fractals as well. That's basically the last resort in case we uh, bump into setups that already have occurred, uh, like here, for instance, so that could have been one, but as I said, no one would do that because you don't trade one hour before the weekend close, right? That no one would do that. Um, but you can see that, uh, you know, we did get a good upside. All right, but this is just theory. So let's take a look at a more practical example of some setups that uh, could have been good. Aussie. All right, on the Aussie hourly chart, we got a good, everything aligned as you can see here from here onwards already let's take a look at an intraday uh, trade potential instead of a uh, instead of a uh, long a swing trade right so that was the beginning of this week beginning of this week for instance this was start of the asian session on monday so probably not many of us would trade but this is just to understand the principle here you get a good arrow and uh, you get basically continuation price is above the daily pivot and we retested this resistance spot, which is an R1. And we, we broke a bit above it, so this is okay. This is not, you don't have to filter this one out, right? So we had an hourly uptrend and you got the arrow, that could have been a continuation on a 15 minute chart, right? And you get good upside to uh, eventually the R2 for about 50 pips. All right, so uh, that would have been an example. Now we, do we remain that uptrend? We do. All right, now here, I would still consider this an uptrend even though we lost the dark blue because here we made actually a rollover from thick red to thin red and we have Haikinashi candles back and we have an arrow. So I think that's fine. Uh, obviously the best is if it's dark blue, but if it made a retracement like that, but everything still stays in uptrend, that's fine. So let's take a look at the 50 minute chart. And you see just after that, we had a blue candle and a blue arrow. 
that could have been a setup for the 15 minute chart. And we have one more here. So you got two intraday setups there on the 15 minute chart on the Aussie to the upside within that uptrend. So those are a couple of examples regarding the harp setups of this week. And uh, Aaron is asking about the, about basically the Sigma momentum. All right? I don't talk about that one too often because for me, it is more of a secondary extra confirmation. What you basically uh, could do is if you think it's too much information, you can even remove it, to be honest. It is more meant and intended as an extra confidence. Um, for instance, if you look at this four hour chart, right, uh, basically from this point of view onwards here, all right, uh, the sigma momentum is in blue. But the transform, right, the momentum will go from blue to red, even though basically we're roughly an uptrend on, on from a bigger point of view. So the sigma is basically a bigger trend. It's a slower mover. The momentum, the, the upper one, will go up and down quicker. So when you have these two aligned, you have basically short and long-term trend aligned. If, um, if you don't have them aligned, then this basically could easily be still a retracement uh, if, if this one is still blue. Now, that retracement could be deep, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean necessarily retracement is over right away. Uh, but it is something to be aware of that if these two aligned, you have both long and short-term oscillators aligned. If you don't, then basically it could still be a retracement. All right. And um, so that's that's the goal. Uh, the sigma is more long-term. That's why I don't look at it a bit. I just look at it a bit less because it's a bit slower mover. Um, and there are a lot of things to discuss in a webinar like this. And, and somehow it, it didn't really surface, you know, um, it's not wasn't discussed too much, uh, but it's an extra confluence for the long term, and, and from that point of view, it's 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 good to to consider uh, as well. All right, now there are a lot of things to to talk about regarding this template, and a lot of things that can help your your trading and my trading, I think. So um, you know, it's 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 not the most important, I would say, but it's definitely nice to have an extra confluence from that. And if you're trading against that momentum, sigma momentum, uh, you, you might be trading a, a reversal or retracement, most likely. All right. All right. So the last one, this MA oscillator, is basically a representation of four moving averages. And uh, you know, if if it's dark green. That's the most momentum. If it's dark red, that's the most bearish momentum. Dark green was bullish. And basically that zero line is, is the border between a, a long-term more bearish territory or bullish territory, right? That's why it goes from light green to dark green and from orange to red when it crosses. Uh, so the angle decides the thickness of the color, but the zero line des decides whether it's aligned with the trend or not. Those bars indicate momentum between 21 and 34 EMA, all right? So if the 21 is accelerating from 34 EMA, we'll see dark red or dark dark green. Okay? Whereas the line is the difference between 8 and 144 EMA. So if the 8 is going back to the 144, we'll have orange. If it goes below it, we'll have, to, we'll have red. So this indicates how much momentum is pulled away from the long term. So all these these oscillators is really moving average based, and in theory I could I could take away the moving averages if I wanted to because I have this information right there. I still leave some moving averages on as an indication of support or resistance, but this tells you all the info regarding my favorite moving averages, um, which are Fib based, eight, twenty one, thirty four, one forty four. All right, sorry for that um, maybe lengthy explanation, but uh, at least you know uh, a bit more about this. All right, so now at this point, I uh, let's take a look at the pound yen. I, I was talking about that earlier today as well, so let's take a look uh, whether we have something or not. 
if there's a setup right now. Let's take a look. Four hour chart, you can see we're getting the sigma is you know crossing basically as well. So that's indicating uh, maybe a long term switch on the sigma. Uh, in any case, the, the, the impulse is definitely up and the Hakanashi are up. So we got a good four hour uptrend at this point. We have moving average aligned, we got a blue arrow. So we got everything up basically at this point, uh, more or less, right? And this is to give us uh, extra confidence in the direction we're trading. All of this is um, basically tailor-made to, to give us more information, like an airplane pilot, you know, when he's looking at the cockpit, when he's in the cockpit and he's looking at all his gadgets and tools. Uh, we're trying to do the same with, with our indicators now. What we have is still small compared to airplane pilot. What we have is probably, for Harp at least, is probably more than um, some others do, though. Pure price action traders, of course, will think this is a lot of indicators. But to be honest, there are even indicator traders that have more uh, than this. Uh, but everything is basically here to provide confidence to traders that are... Um, maybe you know don't have 10 years experience right or, or five years the, the more experience you have the easier it does become to trade with no indicators that's my opinion at least um if you start out for the very start actually it's 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 easier to trade without indicators than if you have a bit of experience without experience actually you're kind of like less fearful from the markets so it is actually easier in a way but then again of course your experience and knowledge will eventually be a drawdown and although you might have a good start you're going to bump into a wall and it's because of that and um, that's the typical pattern you see with traders is is basically a good start then a dip and i like that then another dip and then we see basically you know slowly but surely climbing up that, that's a realistic kind of growing path of a trader all right so Pauline has an uptrend on the four hour the hourly therefore I think uh, is is ready for a potential to the upside and we could uh, take a look at our swing time plate for that part of for that part excuse me Uh, as you can see, there is, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. Everything is aligned. Now we do have a bit of divergence between these tops. So what could happen is that, uh, we might see a bit of retracement here, uh, as we, uh, are in a four hour, also four hour point of view. Uh, when we look at the swing perspective, don't forget that we're also right at resistance here, long-term moving average as well and for traders that are using accu pivot points uh the murray math is right at an extreme overshoot by the way all right so this is probably not although we have this aligned uh there are some filters that are warning us like the long-term moving averages on the four-hour chart that uh, this could be not a good spot to to go long all right so from that point of view i think we have got to be a bit careful and uh the pound yen does not look at this moment that that ball set up. All right, um, that could be different. For instance, for the dollar yen, let's take a look at that. Basically, what we'll be having soon by this week, I would expect, uh, we're already testing the uh, version. First version basically is um, a dashboard and alert system that will help us combine Hakanashi candles and uh, basically the momentum. We will also have the same dashboard alert system for accu traders as well so it will make it a lot you know a lot of things easier to have an instant understanding which which pairs and time frames could be well set up and that will save us a lot of scanning and uh manual checking uh, as uh, as you're trading all right so from a from a dollar yen point of view i would say that this is this is looking bearish but we are in a retracement daily definitely down you see red 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 that's pretty clear all right so from a one hour perspective i think that uh, we could see try to price 
for prices to try to make a retracement up to 115, these long-term moving averages, for instance. All right, 15 is up, but that's logical because of the hourly. So I think that as soon as this gets a red, if we're looking for a swing setup, as soon as this uh, candle turns red or we have a red arrow, or even now it's a risky one, but we do have an oscillator turn, those are potential setups. But this one is a bit risky, obviously, because the momentum is not totally faded from this hourly chart. But that is possible, actually, uh, at this point already. Now, anyone who does take a short here, I think, has to go with a stop loss a bit wider because I do think there could be a push up to 115. So I think that from that perspective, 115.10 is probably needed. Once we have a red candle or a red arrow, then I think we can use this top right here for a stop loss placement. Sorry. All right, so I do think that uh, a swing trade is possible. In theory, now I'm not sure if a swing trade is the best uh, for to, you know, for this week necessarily. So let's take a look at some intraday perspective as well. Uh, obviously, dollar yen is not good for intraday. Why? Because the long term long trend is uh, is down, long term trend and momentum is down. So I would, if I traded to the upside, would definitely need to have thick blue. If I traded as a counter trend, we don't have that. So we would be, for instance, looking for, 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 sorry, for scalping trades. What I would like to see is 50-minute momentum. And then I have a scalping template. What I would like to see basically is 50-minute momentum here. We don't have that at this point. Nor do we do that on, um, on the pound yen. And you may say, well, why not? We have dark red here. Yes, but we're above the pivot. So we don't want to scalp, I think, uh, in general as a good rule. You want to scalp against the pivot. So we can keep scanning like this. I didn't do it beforehand, so I'm not sure which one has momentum. The euro yen is a bit different. You can see this has momentum, has reached the S1, it's bouncing up the S1. It has dark red and red. All right, so let's use the scalping template here. Uh, the hourly is uh, in a downtrend too. The oscillators are just turning. All right, but that's okay. They lost momentum. All right, so as long as the four hour, you see the four hour, it has downtrend red. This is down, this is down, this is down. So the hourly is not down uh, on the oscillators. Four hour is though, but the hourly does have disaligned. So basically it depends on which time frame you want to trade, honestly. Um, it is uh, at this moment, more of a swing setup probably than an intraday setup because the four hour is down. The four hour is down, all right? So we're looking for, when the four hour is trending, we're looking actually for an hourly retracement to finish. Therefore, it is an hourly setup. This is actually the setup candle with the red bar and the red arrow. And uh, that trade is now on its way. We have red diamonds here too. Now, is this a setup for lower time frames? Not really at this point. Why? It's not an intraday setup, and I'll tell you why. Because the hourly is not trending. But it could be a scalping setup. Because for scalp, we only need 15 minute and below the pivot point. So if we have a 15 minute trend, we could look at the five minute chart to look for follow through. So it depends. Basically, it doesn't matter what time frames we look at. What we need is a, is a momentum and trend on one time frame, and we'll look at one time frame lower. If we don't have momentum or trend on that time frame, on one time frame, uh, then basically uh, we don't want to zoom in. So we, we do have it under 15 at this point. So the 5 is okay at this, at this moment, uh, so especially after we bounce up up to the M2, this could easily become a resistance for a move down to uh, to M1. Now, if we lose, obviously, um, if we lose color here and regain color, that could be a setup. Or if we get an arrow here, for instance, those could be potential uh, trades.
Now, of course, there's never a guarantee of any continuation, despite the uh, the fact that there's a, a downtrend on the 50. So what we would do, what I would do uh, from train manager point of view is uh, basically see if we get, basically use, one second, let's see if I have, okay, good. All right. In this case, we want to go above the pivot point as a stop loss, the very minimum. And uh, we would want to be careful if on a 50 minute chart, here, let me show you the candles. If, uh, if we on a 50 minute chart, do not break this bottom within five to six candles. All right, for intraday, you want to always be a bit more careful, especially with the tight stop loss. If this would be a swing trade on a higher time frame and we put the stop loss here, then that would be a different story. We could wait actually for price to make a correction and continue. The, the trade management is always a bit more, um, let's say, that we need more active trade management on lower time frames, especially if you use a tighter stop loss. That trade management point of view uh, is a bit more tricky. So as an easier rule of thumb, um, the best to tackle that is use fractals. I just deleted my own chart. One second. Uh, regarding the trade management, basically, the cool thing is that we have a trail as well that trails fractals. All right, that is part of the heart charts as well as automatic trade management system that, that uses fractals. All right, and you can decide which time frame. So that's useful um, regarding, um, regarding that. So from a 50 minute, point of, if you're trading the 50 minute chart, however, not the five. All right. Um, 15, then we probably want to put the stop loss here, as I said. All right. Basically, the trade management, besides fractals, from a manual point of view, you just want to make sure that the price goes our way relatively fast and doesn't take too long. You don't want to wait, let's say, a day on a 15-minute chart before price goes our way. That's not the intention. Swing trade, we can be typically a bit more patient, uh, but eventually also we want to see the trade go our way uh, and reduce risk. All right, so that's about it, I guess. Let me see if there are any questions. Not at the moment. So, you know, 50 minute chart for scalping. Uh, one hour, one hour momentum is useful, but the most important is 15. 15 has to be momentum. There has to be uh, the top indicator and the red candles uh, or Heikinashi candles. In fact, if we scalp, have to be going our way. We got to also be on the right side of the pivot point. Those are bare minimums before we can start thinking about trading on a five minute chart. You want to be careful, of course, of the usual things like news events and stuff like that. All right. Uh, swing trades, uh, you know, I would be looking at four-hour charts, and I would be using the swing template. And uh, would be then, when we have a trend, looking at uh, the one-hour. And uh, before I dive into the one-hour, you know, I would be looking for these things to be aligned. At, at the minimum, the momentum here on the Heiken Ashi and, and the, uh, the top indicator, preferably the sigma as well, because that indicates long-term. All right, folks, so tomorrow we're going to be back with one more webinar at the same time, same place. And if you have any specific focus uh, you would like to discuss, then let me know, because I think this is, you know, these two webinars due to Brexit are going to be more um, educational kind of formatted and uh, focus. So, you know, if you have anything you would like to ask, like Iron did, this week would be better than next week. Next week, I, I you know, I think that we're going to be more looking at... Uh, 
actual trading decisions uh, as we did uh, in the weeks before. Um, so make sure if you're interested in, in finding out more Brexit, uh, it is a historical event. So I hope to see you in this uh, webinar with the British referendum on EU membership. Tomorrow, strategy, same time, same place, 6.45 at Admiral Markets. And in the evening, Thursday, we take a look at Fibonacci Advanced, part one and two. So I really hope that you're going to be taking a look at these webinars too. And then tomorrow, of course, with Elite Currency at 4 p.m. Central European time. Thanks, everyone, for joining, and wish you all great trading. Cheers.